podcast back! <laughs> <laughs> so, so Jay, what's the story with the dub BF? Do you have a bit of I scat? have been waiting about seven episodes to talk about this. The WBF, World Bodybuilding Federation. Um, yeah, so Vince has always had a massive chubby for a grotesquely <laughs> muscled, oily man in Speedos. Hop hat and cane. Talk about stepping out for a night on the town. Look at that mass. Holy cow. Ooh, look at this creation. It's no small wonder why every wrestler at their peak in the WWF was also at their most largest, most ripped. Uh, in the bodybuilding world, the IFBB is king and had been for over 40 years. Vince booked an exhibition booth at the IFBB's Mr. Olympia contest under the guise of simply promoting a new bodybuilding magazine called Bodybuilding Lifestyles. But then opened the Trojan horse. He underhandedly distributed flyers for his own new federation, the WBF, the World Bodybuilding Federation. And then... While being at... Yeah. The... <laughs> oh my god, you cheeky motherfucker, Vince. So in a whirlwind of hype, flaunting money, payoffs and VIP treatment, Vince unveiled 13 previously IFBB muscle men at a New York City presser in January 91. Between the magazine, the weekly TV show WBF Body Stars and cross-promoting on WWF Superstars, it was all falling into place. Their inaugural contest would be that June in Trump Plaza and... Here's where it all goes downhill. They hyped Lou Ferrigno, but they couldn't come to terms and Vince was left holding his lad. He never showed. <laughs> uh, the steroid scandal hit, WWF in 91, where Vince admitted to experimenting with steroids at a time where the WBF was touted as being drug-free, which obviously the bodybuilders weren't. Then the sex scandal hit in 92. So, you know, there's a lot of things happening at the same time. Their version of Hulk Hogan, Gary Strydon, maybe he shouldn't have won the contest over some of the other competitors. So there's this shit fixed, you know. And uh, more importantly, at its core, the contests themselves were awful. Uh, critics panned Vince for gimmicking the contestants, giving them characters WWF style. And that was one of the main attractions of the XFL as well. So fans of bodybuilding wanted a pure sport, but Vince wanted to give them sports entertainment. So trying to please both wrestling fans and bodybuilding fans pleased neither. What's pure about bodybuilding? <laughs> no gimmicks. <laughs> he's like, oh my God, look at the magician. Oh, he's going to pull one out of the hat. <laughs> By July 92, after a year and a half and two failed contests and losing $15 million, Vince calls it quits on bodybuilding. Those 13 athletes were allowed to return to the IFBB the next year after being fined 10% of their WBF wages. Because, uh, yeah, you left to go join this you ruthless cunt over here. Who left thought that was going to make it to the mainstream? Like, bodybuilding, yeah. I'd imagine, like, even in the 80s, it was crazy niche. Yeah. No, like, really. way, way more niche than wrestling would ever be. I would imagine the only fans of bodybuilding are, are bodybuilders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they're in the fucking contest. <laughs> well, only 13 athletes did sign, and the rest oh of them said, God. stay away from this. This is obviously a short-term gain, long-term you're fucked. So, the magazine stops, TV show cancelled, but you can still see the remnants of Vince investing in bodybuilding supplements, the Integrated Conditioning Programme, the ICO Pro, uh, and would continue to pimp it on WWF TV through to 1995. Incredible and macho. What else could it be but the WBF? Ooh, yeah. Dig it. You were my hero. Whoa. whoa. But what about Lex Luger? What of them? Hmm. As we mentioned in episode 24, when Flair jumped ship, Luger was their next main man in WCW. Jim Hurd turned him heel and a racist, asking Ron Simmons to be his show for. Worked out great for Triple H, so, you know. <laughs> uh, and when he worked his agreed number of dates in his contract, he just practically sat out the rest of his time until dropping the belt to Sting at Super Bowl 2. Pay me, like? Yep. Nice. Vince snapped him up for the WBF. And he also co-hosted the Body Stars TV show with him. Unfortunately, Luger never competed in the WBF as he was injured in a motorcycle accident. And by the time he recovered, the WBF has collapsed. 
Fucking hell. It's all right. A couple of months later, he joined the WWF roster, debuting at the 93 Rumble as... The Narcissist? As uh, Narcissus. And what was that? <laughs> what he was called? His name was Narcissus. Narcissus. That's ridiculous. Okay. Name. I've been talking about this man, Narcissus. And then they quickly changed it to the Narcissist. <laughs> it's like, look at how Greek this Polish dude looks. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was a uh, oh, great yeah. little history lesson. Yeah. Oh, I'm kind of nuts. Um, I'm I'm actually a little bit surprised that it wasn't a bit more successful because like you had the NWA, Vince kind of brought in all these cartoon characters and you know blew away everyone else. Why wouldn't it work in WBF? It's you one know, of those things it's a sport. where yeah, exactly. Wrestling is a show and. Yeah. Bodybuilding is a sport, apparently. Hmm. So it's we, not, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, no magician gimmicks. You have to be good at something to for it to be a sport. You know what I mean? It has to be difficult. Like you know. <laughs> oh my God, Messi! It's <laughs> Pele. Oh, narcissus! It's fucking ridiculous. Oh God.